I did it again. I accidentally binged a series in one month again. Hi friends, I'm Dadi. Welcome back to another video. And today we are going to be talking about the series that I accidentally binged in September. Yes, I am well aware that I made a similar video in August and it just happened again in September, okay? I just, I don't intend for these things to happen, they just do. And so here I am once again to talk about the series that I accidentally avenged. And that series is The Illuminae Files. <laughs> <laughs> a little context as to how we got here. My friends Sammy and Isenia recommended that I read Illuminae. They've been talking about it in the chat for a long time and so I saw it at the bookstore one day and I was like, let's do it. Let's read this book. And so I bought it. I am personally a sucker for mix mixed mediums in books. It is something I do in my own writing quite a bit, so I'm very excited whenever I have the chance to read a mixed medium book, especially because there are not many of them and I want more of them. And so I got the book and it took me a few weeks to get to it, but when I finally sat down to read it, I basically flew through it and I think I read it in like maybe two, three days at most and it's like a 600 page book but I got through it so quickly and then when I went to the bookstore to grab the sequel, Gemina, they didn't have it. <laughs> and so they told me that it was like gonna come in one of the next shipments so I like asked for them to call me and a few weeks later, like two weeks later, they called me, oh it's here and so I went to pick it up. Mind you, also, when I went to get Gemini, since they didn't have it, I ended up picking up Obsidio, which is the third book in the trilogy, because I was like, I'm not going to take any chances, I'm just going to pick it up now, even though I can't read it, just to like make sure I have it for when I actually get around to reading it. Anyway, they called me from the bookstore, I went up to pick up Gemini, <laughs> I read it in like two days, and then a few days later I read Obsidio and I stayed up till 5 in the morning finishing it. So, yeah, I binged this series in like, in the span of the month. It wasn't like when I did the Folk of the Year trilogy that I accidentally did it all in about a week. This I did over the span of a month, but I still accidentally binged it. It wasn't in my plans to read the entire series in that month, but I did. And I have thoughts. So let's just stop me rambling and get to other me doing some other rambling. Yeah, big ass. Spoiler warning right here. I'm going to be talking about the entire series in depth. So spoilers ahead I I'm, I'm not gonna like hold back. So like if you don't want to be spoiled, please just you can go Click away watch some of my other videos or whatever first things first. I want to talk about my ratings I'm just gonna do these quickly. Illuminate, 5 out of 5 stars. Gemina, 5 out of 5 stars. Ocelio, 5 out of 5 stars. <laughs> yes, I rated the entire series a 5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely loved it, the entire thing. I, by the fact that I read it so quickly, um, I just, I adored the series and everything that it encompassed. I'm not usually a sci-fi reader, but this really just like gripped me. I don't know if it was the mixed mediums that it was using or just the plot line, the characters, maybe it was a combination of all those things, but I just, this series would not let me go. So yeah, I five stars all around. This is probably like one of my highest rated series that I've ever read. I don't think I have given this like high, like consistent high amount, like high rating to another series ever. I'm pretty sure that like this is the series that I've ever rated the highest. So this is the order we're gonna do it. Mixed medium, narrative, and writing, world building, characters, plot, and stakes. So mixed medium, graphics, this is kind of also gonna bleed into narrative a little bit which is why originally I ordered it in this way. So the entire series is, to be, is supposed to be read as three separate dossier files. That's why they're called the Illuminae Files because each book is meant to be like a file uh, recounting the events that happened in the past but is now recounting them for a present audience. It's very interesting because the, the book in itself has two concurrent like time narratives so the files in themselves 
are recreations of past events while the briefing notes that some of the pages have some of the pages have briefing notes as you can see here those briefing notes are in the narrative present yet the page in itself that they are the briefing notes are commenting on is in a narrative past so i found it very interesting that they have these two narrative timelines yet you never really get lost as to where you're at at the beginning of illuminate you do know that you're reading a dossier but you don't know what the intended audience is and you find out at the end and once you find out at the end of illuminate you have you do know for the rest of the series who the intended audience of these files are which i thought was a really great narrative structure but that i'm getting into narrative and i'm just going to keep talking about graphics right now because the books are meant to be dossiers they the book is not written in the typical paragraph style of most other novels what i mean by that is that you have emails between characters medical reports recreated interviews, surveillance footage summaries, and many other forms of graphic storytelling. What I really loved about the series is that it doesn't adhere to the normal paragraph structure and because of that the book is very easy to read but it's also a very different experience when you're reading. It's almost like a blend of a traditional novel and a graphic novel and I think the graphics really work in the favor of the novel instead of working against it especially because this is a sci-fi novel so it feels much more fut futuristic than it would otherwise if it were just a paragraph structured novel. The whole series is ridiculously creative not just in its plots and its character developments but also in just the way that the books are themselves considering that they are mostly composed of graphics rather than paragraph narration and because of the style in which the novel is written the pacing never truly suffers it's a very quick pace because every scene is no more than two or three pages long really the only place where i thought that the series pacing suffered a little bit was sometimes in the surveillance footage summaries um, those sometimes would drag on just a tad too long, maybe like a page or two too long, especially because they weren't in a traditional paragraph structure. And when you're reading a novel that is mostly not paragraph structured, having too much paragraph structure suddenly can drag the pace a little bit. So that's where the only places where I thought that the novel suffered a little bit, but most of the time the pacing was quick and like it just kept moving because the page, like the scenes were short and to the point and concise. Now I'm gonna move more into narrative and writing. One of the really cool things about the novel is that since it's told through chats and text, there's not really one overarching narrator and so it's really amazing and it captures the skill that the writers have that they were able to create specific narrative styles and speech patterns for each of the characters because the novel is mainly told through text messages and like surveillance recreations there's not a lot of like in-person talking to each other so it was really important that the characters narrative styles and like a feel you get a feel of the character very easily through their text speak which can be hard to do as we all know that texting is very complicated and very hard um but the the writers did a really great job of creating specific speech patterns and narrative styles for each of the characters that you could always tell who you were talking to and if like there were subtle shifts in a character's speech patterns and text patterns, you could tell. And I thought that was really, really well done. Like I said, my only big complaint with the writing was that sometimes the footage summaries tended to go in a little bit too long. But other than that, no complaints on, uh, on that front. Okay, I'm gonna move on to world building. The world building in this is phenomenal. I really enjoyed the this felt like a lived-in universe. This wasn't like a thing that was suddenly popping up. It was like it felt lived in and real and there were lives being led and everything was like established. This isn't like a new thing that's happening um, suddenly out of nowhere. The world feels real, the characters feel very real and tangible and I think the writers did an excellent job with the world building especially because this is all sci-fi. It's taking place in the year 2575 so it's like a long way from here and yet it feels plausible it feels real it feels like something that could happen in 
500 plus years the world just feels very real to me at least to me it felt very very real which i definitely enjoyed one thing i really enjoyed about the series is that yes you do follow the same cast of characters the entire way through but the cast of characters grows each book we start illuminate with esther mason and katie grant and we continue to follow them throughout the rest of the series but in gemina which is the second book we add three characters to that cast. We add Hannah Donnelly, Nick Malikov, and Ella Malikova. And then in Obsidio, we add Asha Grant, which is Katie's cousin, and Reese Lindstrom. Even though Asha and Reese are the later additions into the book, they come in at the closing of the series, they're still really well developed throughout. And the beauty of these characters is, and the beauty of the world building in itself, is that they all have past relationships with each other before we meet them in the narrative of the book which gives them a sense of like like I said that is a, a this is a lived-in world like these people have known each other they're not just meeting each other now out of the blue they have history and it's important for the reader to find it to like figure out that history and they are told throughout the narrative of each character's history with each other but them having that history in itself is what gives credence to the rest of the world building and to the narrative. These books have two very big interwoven things. The plot in itself is interwoven, which I will explain later, and the characters are interwoven because this book basically plays six degrees of separation with their characters. Because it takes place in space, there's a, a vast distance that needs to be covered somehow in order to create relationships between these characters, right? So it basically plays six degrees of separation with its characters. Katie Grant and Esther Mason are our main characters in Illuminate, right? And in Gemina, the th our three main characters, Hannah, Ella, and Nick, don't know Katie and Ezra. But there is a connection between the five of them, and that is Katie's father. Katie's father works in the station where Hannah, Nick, and Ella live. And Hannah and Katie's father meet in the events of Gemina and have to work together. So when Katie and Hannah meet in Obsidio, they have that one degree of separation that brings them together. And the series as a whole follows that pattern of playing six degrees of separation between each of their characters to give them what, that one point of commonality that brings them together in the narrative. I'm gonna move on to plot now. Like I said earlier, the plot of this book is very interwoven. I wanted to talk about it kind of in like micro and macro terms because in the micro of it all, each book has a contained story arc and it outlines the happenings of that specific story arc. But in the background of it all, there is an overarching plot line that you're not following constantly, but it's always in the back of your mind that this like overarching big picture plot line is there, right? I think that the writers did a really good job of like having those two plot lines side by side, but never the bigger picture never fully overshadowing the closed plot line of the moment of the book. So I'm gonna explain it better. Illuminae focuses on when the colony that Katie lives on is attacked and she and the population have to jump on these battle carriers and science ships to be saved from the corporation that's attacking their, their colony, right? And so it focuses on that, on her surviving in, in space now, basically. And it isn't until the end that you get to see the, like, the bigger sinister pro plot line at work, right? Then Gemina. Gemina focuses on the space station that Katie and the survivors of her mining colony are going to. But it focuses on the space station where Ella, Hannah, and Nick live. And so we spend most of the narrative of the book there. And it isn't until like three-fourths into the book that they like collide together finally. And then because you already have the major plot line that was established at the end of Illuminate in the back of your mind, you still remember that this is happening. And because you're not focusing on, on Katie and Ezra, you're constantly in the back of your mind like, oh, when are they going to show up? Because they're coming, 
you know they're coming so you're it's constantly in the back of your mind that this is there's a bigger picture at play here and then at the end of this novel again the bigger picture comes back to the foreground and you're like oh shit's going down and then in Obsidio it focuses on the people that have survived the mining colony being attacked and the destruction of the space station that they were going to coming back to the mining colony because they find out that they're still survivors and there's a way to get off that system and it focuses focuses on that, but Obsidio is really the one where the writers have the most at play because they have to balance the bigger plotline with the plotline of the people at the colony, which is where Asha and Reese are. It is a balancing job that is not easy to accomplish, but the writers accomplish it masterfully, truly. Really, kudos to the plot for like being able to keep the bigger plot of it all in the background without never overshadowing what's actually going on. And in Obsidio, you really do have it in the back of your head that this is gonna, that like, these ships are coming, There's we're all moving towards a collision course at this point. And that's also because while in Gemini, you mostly focused on the space station where Hannah, Nick, and Ella were, here in Obsidio, you really do focus on all the characters, like the whole cast of characters. So you're constantly flipping back and forth between the mining colony and um, the spaceships where Katie, Ezra, Ella, Nick, and Hannah are. Jesus, there are a lot of characters in this box. There are a lot of characters, but it's surprisingly easy to keep track of them all. I think it's also because of the narrative structure of this book and because it is told in mixed medium, it's pretty easy to keep track of everybody and where they're at and what they're doing and who they are. The last thing that I wanted to talk about was stakes. So some pretty high stakes are set up from the beginning of this book, especially with there being an attack on the mining colony that Katie lives in and then having to like get off world. There's gonna be death. There, not everybody's gonna survive. Yes, our main cast of characters did survive intact which i thought could have i i was rather honestly i kind of loved the character so much that i wasn't even all that bothered that every single person like in the main core characters survived but there is a lot of death it does go through with the stakes that it sets up especially because there is something that i haven't really mentioned in this video which i should have a long time ago when i talked about characters and that is aiden the ai so one of the ships that Katie and her people leave on when their colony is attacked is the Alexander Battle Carrier and that is run by an AI called Aiden. And Aiden is having an identity crisis at the moment because part of his core was damaged in the battle that ensued and so he's having a bit of an identity crisis. Because Aiden is having an identity crisis, he makes some sketchy ass decisions which I was totally in favor of. I, uh, Aiden is one of my favorite characters in this book. There are stakes set and there are stakes met. The book doesn't pull punches. Again, because I was so invested in the whole cast of characters of the main core characters, I wasn't all that bothered that all of them survived but I also think that it would have been beneficial to the stakes set up by the novel if one or two of them hadn't made it but at the same time i'm not mad that they all made it i'm quite glad that all my babies are safe <laughs> i think that the novel does it the series as a whole does a pretty good job of setting up stakes and meeting them most of the time yeah maybe that is one of my little criticisms that i like would have liked the stakes met a little bit more more impacted in the core group but at the same time like i have said a million uh, i sound like a broken record now i'm kind of okay with them all being alive so yeah tldr of this video i really love this series it's really good i like all the characters the plot the world building everything i'm i'm very invested in the series i love it a lot and uh i just i really liked this and i'm really glad that i read all of it uh, I sort of binged it as I said, but yeah, it was a good time fun time Definitely pick up the books if you're in the mood for a quick read because these because they are text most of the time It reads super quickly like super super quickly and just in general. It is a beautiful book to read They're just beautiful books. The graphics in these are excellent. So It's just beautiful. So yeah, this has been me ranting, raving. I think that was pretty coherent, but I'm not sure. 
I'll find out when I edit this. Anyway, that was my long ramble on the Illuminati files, which again, I really, really loved. And if you know of any other mixed media books, please send them my way. I am constantly looking for them. Those have been my thoughts. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope you enjoyed that video. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Come yell at me in the comments. Be sure to support your local indie bookstores. I've been Daddy, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye.